Yolanda Moore is an overcomer. Uh, she's a person who has been a big dreamer all of her life and really didn't have sense enough to know as a kid that those things that she dreamed about weren't gonna come true. And she's a person who has endured a lot of things, experienced a lot of great things in her life, has come to a point where she actually loves herself. She accepts herself for who she is and she loves herself. We grew up in a single parent home, didn't meet my father until I was 18. My mom struggled, she battled depression for most of her life. I have other sisters and brothers, there are six of us, but I'm the youngest of six, so it's, they're much older. So I grew up like an only child, so basketball for me was an outlet. And then of course I had my Barbie dolls to keep me company. I didn't really have a whole lot of friends. So it was it was kind of lonely, but it was, it was fun at the same time because basketball gave me the outlet. Um, and it let me express myself and I was, figured out you know, early on that I was kind of good at it. And so I threw myself into that sport because it gave me the confidence that I needed as a young girl growing up, you know, dealing with being the tallest, you know, always being the tallest, having the big feet and all of that, dealing with those self-esteem issues. So when I got on the court, I felt free to be myself because the, the, the big feet and being tall came in handy. So that's where I excelled. But after that, you know, coming home, you know, no dad, we come home sometimes when the lights be off, no food, things like that. So I had, you know, similar struggles to, to most kids growing up in a single parent home, you know, in that time in the 80s, early 90s. I would have to say, just when I realized that basketball could take me somewhere, um, that actually occurred during the summer um, when I would go and play AAU basketball, we traveled all around the country and there would be these college coaches there. And so once my high school coach started, you know, showing me and, and really explaining what opportunities lie to, lay ahead of me, then I, I, I understood that basketball was my way out, so to speak. Um, yeah, I was smart. I mean, I got good grades, 3.5, grade point average, National Honor Society and all those things. But I just knew that basketball would, would open up the world to me more so than just, you know, education uh, would, even though my education has, but basketball just, you know, it's taken me all around the world. So. You know, I had, uh, it, it was good, you know, being treated like a rock star, being courted by all the major colleges and universities at, you know, 17 to 18, but still, I had to deal with the isolation from teammates. Um, I had to deal with isolation from, you know, just peers, jealousy, envy, those kind of things, and me trying to kind of, I call it now dumbing down. You know how you dumb down your, your skills or your talents to, so that you can fit with everybody else? So I found myself doing that a lot. Um, just because I wanted to wanted to have friends. So it's like a, a two-edged sword, so to speak. I chose to stay home for college and go to Ole Miss because it wasn't too close to uh it wasn't too close to home, it was like three and a half hour drive, but it wasn't so far away that if I needed to get home to my mom, then I could get home. Um and so I was a teenage mom at the age of eighteen, so my mother had to bring my daughter, Courtney, um, who's nineteen now. She had to bring my daughter to the games and, you know, I would commute back and forth home quite often so that I could try to, you know, form some type of bond with her. Well, I have to go back to just my college years because I battled knee injuries during college. I have a degenerative arthritis um, in my knees and I was diagnosed at 18 and told not to play because by the time I was 30, I wouldn't be able to walk. So, you know, I had knee surgeries, three knee surgeries during college in my senior year. Um, I had to take shots every week just to be able to play in the games. I couldn't practice, but I just rode the bike and, and did like little exercises. So when the WNBA rolled around, it started in uh, May of 97. Well, I was, you know, I had just given birth to my second daughter in January of 97. And um, my coach, who was my high school coach, I'm sorry, my college coach, Coach Chancellor, who got the job as a Houston Commons coach, he told me not to come to the tryouts because he didn't think that after having battled the knee injuries that I had, plus with all of the uh, taller players that they had drafted that play my position, um, that I would have a chance of making the team. His words were, you know, you have a snowball's chance in hell of making my team, so, you know, don't come. You should try coaching. You should try, you know, something else that's going to give you a more stable, you know, life. So I can say, looking back now, that Maybe he was looking, you know, had my best interest at heart. He didn't want me to suffer some type of disappointment. But at the same time, I knew what was in me. I knew what I had prayed about. I know that God had told me, you know, that I could have that. And so I'd worked hard. I'd worked really, really hard. You know, I would get up in the morning, take my daughter to daycare. And if I had to take her to class, I took her to class. I had a full load of classes. 
and then I would go in the evenings, you know, do rehab, do weightlifting, go on the track and run, and go at night and practice, you know, so I was ready. But going down there to Houston that first trial and seeing all of those women with the same aspirations as me, you know, they were just as good as, as I was, and they had the same confidence that I had. Um, so I really didn't focus on who else was there. I was just really focused on their four slots. There are over 225 of us here. I'm getting one of those slots. The title of my book is You Will Win If You Don't Quit. And um, it just, it chronicles my journey from Port Gibson, Mississippi, and all of the issues that I dealt with, you know, with the teen pregnancy and, and the self-esteem issues and no father figure and all of that, all the way up through my college years and making the WNBA. So that's really what the book is about. It's, um, I wrote it to just inspire other people to just believe in themselves and no matter what the obstacles, if you are passionate about what it is that you're doing, then the obstacles don't matter. Um, it's kind of a guide as to kind of how to map out your plan of action. I mean, because everybody has a dream, no matter what, you know, what background we come from or, or what things we've gone through, everybody has a dream. And so I think that um, for me, I like reading other people's story. And um, I've been encouraged by a lot of people in my life to tell my story. And so that's what this book is. It's my story. My website is uh, www.yolandamore33.com. I'm on Twitter at Timeout with Yo and on Facebook slash Yolanda Moore 33. I'm Yolanda Moore and I'm an everyday woman.